Welcome to this week's premium podcast. Now, this is a demonstration of sorts. Why, why, why is it that I feel nervous if I'm recording something? I, I guess I shouldn't feel nervous if I'm recording something. If I just go live, that's great. But this is an example of the type of podcast that comes with being a patron on Patreon. This one's free. This is a pilot. I might do one or two more, but what you're going to see through this is the type of weekly podcast you get about me, about my life. And again, the whole thing can be cut, copied, used in videos, media, anywhere you want. But as a patron, any you know, people that are subscribers will get the secret hidden link to the video, whether it's on YouTube or some access only, you know, limited area, or you're not able to even access it without entering a password or something. I, I, all depending on how YouTube works out or what the distributor does, I might use this channel or that channel, but people that are premium subscribers, probably Patreon, will get access to these weekly videos. These are uncut. These originally stream out on Twitch live. Now again, this is a green screen behind me and video makers, content creators, anyone can take anything from the videos that I make anywhere on YouTube and copy them and put them into anything without any credit. Just, it's just free. Uh, I maintain the copyright on it, but th that's it. Just, it's mine. And anyone can use it. You don't have to give credit. You can cut it and take it out of context. Uh, all news is fake news. So I don't care what you make me say. You know, make me say by cutting and editing and stuff. One of the things that I go through in these uh, weekly uncut, and again, you know, this is uncut. I'm not, I'm not editing this. My words aren't super refined. This is kind of sort of bloopers. One of the things that I'm going to go through is kind of semi sort of weekly announcements, like what Jesse did this last week. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. But after this normal uh, uncut sort of Jesse just talking for who knows how long segment, I get into reading um, the, the, the weekly stuff for Pacific Daily Times. There are two main articles and I'm doing those on the Pacific Daily Times YouTube channel and other outlets also. Never put the videos only on one place. And after that, I do the proper podcast. It's 10 minutes and that's free and it comes in an audio version and it also has uh, a presence on Daily Motion. I would put that on YouTube, but YouTube decided that under 1,000 subscribers, I can't advertise. So I'm setting up my business model so that I never need to advertise. If I start below 1,000, not advertising on my videos, and then I get above a thousand and I suddenly change, then I no longer have ad free videos. That's, that's bait and switch. And that can create distrust. So people, the first thousand people subscribe to me because they don't want ads. They're used to not having ads. So guess what? That's what the business model has got to be. YouTube's choice. And I didn't, I, they didn't ask me. Uh, they just unilaterally declared it, so fine. If I can't have it for the first 1,000, I'm not ever going to run ads because that would violate the basic business model. I'm not going to be forced into changing in what my business model is. Again, you know, you, you change your business model, you end up with trouble. H how many companies do that? Look what happened to Star Wars. It was a thing, and then it suddenly started to change what it was, kind of, and, and it had a lot of its base very, very angry. And it, none of it was necessary. None of it was necessary. Never change your DNA. Organization, uh, business, uh, politicians, don't, don't change who you are. Go back on your campaign promises. Don't do that. And stay true to what you're doing also in uh, media, entertainment, Star Wars, podcasting, whatever. So... 
that's what the deal is. This is an example. It's Jesse on cut. It's conversational. It's conversive. I'm just here. I'm real. And patrons on Patreon or maybe some other website I might set up a subscription for can get access to these. You, the only way to get the link on YouTube or be able to view the video is to have that access protected by a password requiring a paid subscription. And I'm going to start it at $1 a month. And unless we hit super inflation, that may never change with time. It might like over 10 years or something become $2 a month. But like the goal is to keep it at would be a dollar a month in about the year 2018 when this is starting. So that's the basic introduction of what this is. Now I'm going to get on to it. See, and I, these are like normal announcements. I'm just, I get on, I go live on Twitch, but it's choppy on Twitch and I save it and then I upload it later. Twitch is live. It's free, but we're depending on where I am in the world. I mean, it, it might be 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 2 a.m. when I go live on Twitch. It'll be there on Twitch. It won't be quality, but that's kind of a freebie for everything, but it's not it's not a good quality video. It's not there and lasting and available. And, you know, another thing too is uh, when I start, when I start recording the podcast proper, um, that, that's gonna, I don't know what I'll do with that. That usually goes on daily motion where I can monetize it. The podcast proper is, is normally monetized. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of rambling. I'm feeling a little bit tired because I did so much stuff this week. But during these, I will talk about what I did the week before, what I'm doing with brands. I mean, go to jessesteel.com and you see all the stuff that I'm involved with, all the stuff that I'm constantly running. I mean, one guy told me this week, he said, Jesse, you seem like one of those high productivity people. I'm like, well, I guess that's a way of uh, labeling it if you've got to label it something. I, I just want to get stuff done. I like learning about many different things. I like doing many different things. I like employing multiple skills and I want to get a lot of stuff done. So a lot of times I'll put in 16 hours a day just getting progress on the projects. jessesteel.com will show you jesse.house, like it's, it's a domain, http colon slash slash jesse.house will show you what the different projects that I have going are. I can see them and see what their progress is. Usually in this first podcast segment, I'm going to talk about those. And speaking of which, let me show you what this is. Now, the first thing I've got to do here, I've got to do what my pastor always wanted to do, and that is scale myself down to size. So I'm going to click on this. See my lovely picture. Uh, that's that's the me, and I'm going to make myself smaller here. Zooming down, zooming down to look at that. I'm smaller, just how my pastor always wanted me to be. And now I'm superimposed on top of myself. Don't you love stripes? I love stripes. I, I guess stripes are a thing. I don't need to look at me anymore. Look at this. This is what I did this week. All these books, I've got a lot of these books that have been available and I've been downloaded over, by pushing around about 5,000 times. I normally publish through this publisher called Smashwords if you haven't heard of it, but those eBooks become available on Sony, they become available on the Apple Store, they become available on Barnes & Noble, and a whole bunch of others. But Amazon, again, there's this obsession with the number 1,000, Amazon doesn't want uh, any of those books from Smashwords until it's been downloaded on whatever platform a thousand times. Well, I have a few books. In fact, uh, if I can get down to them, all these books, these are all ebooks. See these two right here? The, the Churchianity and the Bapticost. Those are my first two books from, from a long time ago. And yeah, you know, 2012 was a publication date, but I do believe I wrote them in 2010 or 2011. Something around about that. Anyway, those have been hovering just up under 900 and all of a sudden, the, the number of downloads just kind of really slowed down. And I said, you know, I, I'm kind of getting tired of, of waiting for this. It looked promising, but now it's getting to a thousand, it's slowing down. And if Amazon doesn't want, if they don't want to be involved in the first 1,000, 
then I have to make a business model that doesn't involve them. So you could always go to smashwords.com and download the Kindle.mobi file. They've always been available for, for reading on the Kindle. I've, I've got a Kindle, my, my Kindle's right here, my little Kindle. Uh, lo I love Kindles, that, that, that's, my, that's my ebook reader. So I, I, you know, they've been available, but not in the Kindle market not downloadable in your Kindle library. So that's kind of a premium service. That's a bit of a luxury. So I decided I do 99 cents. So all these eBooks, they've been free on Smashwords. Go, go to jessiesdale.com, find the books, go look for them in, you know, smashwords.com, find me on smashwords.com. It's one word, Smashwords, you know, and you can get it free and read it on your Kindle Moby. But if you want to pay a dollar for it, uh, you can get it in your Kindle library for 99 cents. And so I put all my eBooks there this week. It was exhausting. Yeah, like 15, 16 eBooks. Exhausting going through. And eight of them, I believe is the number, can now be purchased through Amazon print on demand. So eight of these books you can get as paper copies. See, see the Pacific Daily Times, the information age. You can get a paper copy. Or you can get the Kindle in your Kindle library for 99 cents. Uh, Wash and Joy, that was about some tea stuff that was sort of going on. We've got uh, The End, uh, is a, that was my Bible translation. I, you, you can go on and read about you know, what, what all these, and I don't know, who, this must be some sort of an ad, I guess. But these are all available now. There's just more pages of Jesse. They're all available in Kindle. I'm really excited about that. I'm really, really thrilled and happy. Uh, running low on water. You know, there was one, one other thing I want to say about this. If we do this, this 99 cents thing, after 1,000, it's no longer free. The ebooks, as ebooks, through the Smashwords, you know, outlets, which include Barnes & Noble, it includes, I, I already listed it before, Smash, like, That'll be free, including Kindle files. So if you put it in your Smashwords library, it's, you've got it free. But after I get 1,000 downloads, purchases, whether through the Kindle store or through Smashwords, once a total is 1,000, I'm going to charge a normal price for them as eBooks, probably 2 or $3. You know, it's digital, so it's a time thing. But they're available in paperback. So I kind of have to respect the paper price and we don't want to eliminate, you know, but 99 cents is not the permanent price. That's a 99 cents on the Kindle store up to the first 1000. This is the paperback edition though. That of course costs money and, and paperbacks have a different price based on how much paper it uses. For example, the translation notes, when I translated the book of Revelation, I called it the end cute name for a, for a translation of the book of Revelation. When I translated it, I took notes and it was a hundred thousand words of notes. And so they're, they're there and, and you can get it and you can read the notes. And uh, that now another thing about this, which is something I wanted to show you the end study space. This is only paperback. You know, if you, you want to get the translation and, and by the way, one other thing, the end translation, just the simple, boring, plain ebook, will remain at Amazon's cheapest price. Right now, I believe it's 99 cents. If, if Amazon changes the policies, it might go up to the minimum and remain free on Smashwords as long as Smashwords has free books, which I believe they do. That will remain there like that forever. Uh, translation notes may go up and so forth. Uh, but at, that'll always be free because I believe in helping people get Bibles. But study space, this right here. Let's do some switching around and show you why study space is such a great thing. This is a look inside the study space book, the Revelation study space. It's double spaced. It's square. The book is square. And it's got these massive margins for taking notes. And for example, the letters to the churches in chapters two and three of Revelation, there they are, that's one letter. And it's lots of room for notes. And 
you know, here's another letter. This is the letter to Philadelphia, right there. Okay, lots of room for notes, only on two pages. Uh, this was a letter to Sardis. See, blank page over there. It's one every two, and you open it up. That's that's what it'll look like. Those those two pages. So it it's great for studying. You're allowed to copy it. You're allowed to copy it and give it to everyone in your Bible study. It, it it's free. But if you copy it and sell it, you've got to give proper credit. It, and it's in, it's in the description. Oh, and, and this, is, this is how I did the 666 translation. His number is 666. I've got to get my head out of the way. Can you, can you see that? There you go. See it? There we are. So it kind of describes it. I did some research. And I, that's my original, if I can move out of the way here. That is my original drawing right there. I, I did some research, and then I drew my own version of it. Yes, I, I disappear if I... If I walk over here, there, there's, a, there's a wall there that you might not be able to see. But. All right, that's what I did this week. I'm exhausted. Ebooks available in the Kindle store. Always been available to read on Kindle. If you go to smashwords.com, add it to your library, download it free. But within the Kindle store, 99 cents each, I'm really happy about this. Again, these are the types of announcements that show up in this... Yeah, you know, when Monday comes for me, <clears throat> talk about talk about Mondays here a little bit. When Monday shows up for me, I I I write the articles. I do preparation stuff for these podcasts, and it it consumes my Monday. And so I refer to Mondays as Mad Media Monday. So we get done with that, and I've been working tirelessly all week. I'll, I'll get to the, the podcast time, and I'll tell you what's been going on. And that's, that, that's, that's what this is. That's, that's the gig here. I want to show you something else. I have to click my way out of some of these. One of the other projects that's been going on, I'm... Uh, what, what, what are you doing? Stop being weird. I'm officially a graffiti artist. Yes. Check this out. Now, you see this here? It says, uh, where are you, Gaga? Right down at the bottom. Where is it? Uh, right there. Where are you, Gaga? Well, Gaga originally, and I am here. That, that, that's, that's, that's my work. Government approved graffiti area was my response to this. Let me, I'll explain what's going on with this. This was the original Gaga, uh, you know, GA, GA, government approved graffiti area. Now that's, for those of you that, that can't read Chinese, that's uh, Hefa, Tu Ya Chu. Hefa is legal, like government legal, and Tu Ya is graffiti, and Chu is area. So that's uh, Hefa, Tu Ya Chu. And, and I, I, I remember some people busting out laughing on Facebook from this. It's like an approved graffiti area, like, like a legal, like lawful graffiti. Like that, that's an oxymoron. Like, like if it's, if, you know, it's, it's, it's not, well, that, and, and I actually went and talked to some of the local graffiti artists. I said, this is a legal graffiti area. Now, the Chinese was written with stencils by the local government. They, 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 you know, the governments in Asia, if you can imagine, they, they, Chinese-speaking countries, they have stencils with words. Uh, a, a lot of American governments, you know, English-speaking governments, governments of English-speaking countries, pardon my small French, will have stencils. Well, they have stencils of their words, and this guy came along and painted the wall and then threw the stencils up and declared this a local area that's legal for graffiti. Well, I went along and made my own stencil, government approved graffiti area, Gaga. I, that's me. That's, that's with the guys you, you might, might recall. Uh, let's see if I could find it. The guys. Remember, remember guys? I think I talked about that previously. That, there's a shirt with this government approved graffiti area thing on the back of it. So I went through and I added this. I made this stencil. It took me two hours to cut it out. 
It's using one of the TextGyre fonts from the Gust Foundry. Awesome, great font. Which, by the way, my Amazon books are published using the free, open, high-quality, awesome font. Same font group, font foundry, as this government-approved graffiti area thing is. So I went and made this, and I went and talked with some of the local... Uh, I mean, I, see, there was actually graffiti over top of this. And I went and whitewashed it again and painted government approved graffiti area on it again. And I went and told the local graffiti artists that I'm going to do this. I said, I'm going to whitewash these. When you guys get done with your graffiti, after a few weeks, I'm going to come back over and whitewash it out again. And they kind of liked the idea. Because, you know, the government approved graffiti area is kind of an absurdity anyway. So... Well, a month or two went by and someone had graffitied this place up and, and I hadn't whitewashed it. So this guy comes along and, and, and there it is. He says, where are you, Gaga? That means that I'm an official graffiti artist. See, a, a graffiti artist doesn't have to be high quality amazing. A graffiti artist has to be annoying. And you think about that. Now, you listen, they're amazing, great graffiti artists. And when they've got, I mean, look, look at the artwork behind this. This is good, good quality writings uh, and good quality artwork that's, that's behind this. But the key to good graffiti is to be effectively annoying. Really get under people's skin. Think about Banksy. Well, another thing, if you don't know, graffiti artists tend to have a name that they go by. Banksy has his, they've, they've all got their names. Well, I'm officially Gaga. The, I mean, I, I wrote government approved graffiti area. But see, see, you see those little black, it's like got like black roller paint over it. And then it's got, you know, like the spray. That wasn't there. And I am here. That wasn't there before. It was just the normal graffiti in the background. So I went, this was my answer. See, I told him I'm going to white it out and, and spray paint the black on it. She said, where are you, Gaga? Where's the white? Where are you going to white it out? So this is kind of the war of the graffiti artists, friendly warfare. Like, like they sprayed this stuff on there, praying and hoping that I was going to come over and wash it out. Like, they were really looking forward to that. So rather than whitewashing it out, because that was kind of annoying, takes a lot of time, I just decided to be annoying this way. So I am now officially notarized as a graffiti artist. I'm not particularly wonderful, but I'm successfully annoying and I'm recognized in other graffiti. I mean, you're not a thing until you're mentioned in graffiti and I'm mentioned in graffiti. So this is a great honor for me to join the crew. I'm not claiming to be one of the best. I'm not claiming to be an awesome artist. I'm just saying a valid graffitiist, a graffiti artist, I'm there. So that's another accomplishment that Jesse's done in his life. Um, all right, that's uh, been fun. I'm trying to think of whether there are any other... Uh, you know what, let me, let, me, let me go back to showing you this. This was the original plan. I, I told people I was going to... There was graffiti there before, I whited it out, painted this, and I told people I was going to do that. And then some time went by, and I guess I got lazy, and then they said, where are you, Gaga? So that's how Gaga got his name. I, I hashtag Gaga Graffiti. I'm not going to do a website because real graffiti is, you know, doesn't have a home. That's, that's the idea. It's just, if you can successfully annoy people, you know, being that lovingly annoying, lovable artist guy that sneaks in like Batman and gets away with it, you're, you're in. You're the real graffiti. So it's an honor. Whatever. There it is. That's one of the things that I did this week. One of the many things. Uh, doing my adjustments for whatever. I, uh, I, I, I think we've... Is that it? Oh! Oh, George! George wants me to show you my, uh, George wants me to show you, 
uh, the the the. the yeah, hold on. I, what is it called? This is my. Uh, <coughs> can here, there we are. This is my. Um, you get this. It's a bagpipe chanter. I mean, let me see if I can play, pull off Amazing Grace on this one. One breath, worst performance ever. I've never practiced it that badly. There you go, Jesse Uncut. That's it. We're done with Jesse Uncut, and this is what Jesse Uncut from Mad Media Monday looks like. One dollar a week on Patreon, or as long as Patreon stays nice to me. I I could always change to something else. One other thing I want to tell you. Where are you? That's some of the paint from the paint that I was doing this week on the graffiti. All right. Cheerio. JesseZeal.com.